Hello everyone and welcome to a game called Kill or Love. So, this is a game uh, where you kill things or you love them. Sometimes people kill for love. I don't know what we're doing in this game, actually. I think it is a type of visual novel where you make choice the choice of whether to kill or love. and. I actually don't know the style, so let's just start and get on into it, shall we? This is a work of fiction, blah blah blah. This is horror. Contains depictions of violence. It's a horror game. From the title, Killer Love, I, I didn't know if you guys knew. Jack! There's a voice calling to me. Wake up, Jack! It's a woman's voice. Mom, is that you? I want to keep on sleeping, but it doesn't seem like she'll give up soon. I open my eyes. Good morning. Oh, hello. Did you sleep well? Chapter 1, Indecision. I know her, not just because she is my nurse. I've known her for a long time now. Her name is Anna. Her, her eyes are red, and her name is red, so she might be evil. We'll see. What, can't talk? Is your throat too dry? Hang on a sec. She comes back with a, a some water in a paper cup. Uh, uh, don't get too close to me now. I don't like it. She helps me sit up, then puts the cup to my mouth and lets me drink. Good. Feeling better now? Yeah. Thanks. Great. Are you comfortable here? Please back up away from me. Thank you. No. Can you sleep well? I can't sleep well if you keep staring at me like that. How is your leg? Girl, you better get back. Does it hurt? Are you bored? I'm I'm all right. Well, if you say so. Oh, thank you. Thank you for backing up, you weirdo. Tell me if there's anything I can do to help, okay? Yeah, okay. Um actually, yes, Jack. What is it? Okay, this this has to be the person who is obsessed with me or something. What's the date today? Do you know? Oh, just that. It's August the 3rd. I thought you were going to ask me on a date, Jack. What is this? I'm sorry, I'm speaking for her now. I say thank you. Anything else? I shrug. Well, okay then. I have to go now. Other patients, you know. But I'll be right back in a bit, so don't worry. Oh, don't worry. I, I won't worry. Anna leans down and pecks me on the lips. Bye-bye. Wait a second. Wait a second. Are we together? Start of journal, August 3rd. And if you guys hear that sound, I'm sorry that's the air conditioner turning on. I actually have nowhere else to go record right now, so... Uh, this is the best option, and if you guys don't hear the sound, that's great. But if you do, I'm really sorry. Mm. Anyway, Star of Journal. August 3rd. I'm going to ki Oh! Okay, I... I am the... I, I'm the, um... Antagonist in this, okay? Didn't think of that. It, I thought I'd be pro, but you know. You know how it be. I... Um, then I, I gotta get into character, y'all. I got to, I gotta own this. I am going to kill someone. Probably. Uh, okay, so he, he doesn't own it himself yet. Now, that just makes me feel like a psychopath. Her name is Anna. Oh, I'm gonna kill a nurse. I don't want to do it. I'm not a violent man. But what else can I do? It would be wrong to let her live, right? But I can't... 
kill her just yet. I'm too weak. I tested my grip strength today. I wrapped a hand around my wrist and squeezed. I couldn't make it hurt at all, not even a little bit. Man, come on now. Why do you want to kill Anna? Because she has red eyes and she's creepy and she gets too close to you? I, I can't see why you would, would, would want to kill her, right? But it doesn't matter much. Even if it was I was strong enough to go through with it, I'd still have to wait. I can't do anything until I know Grace is safe. Who's Grace? Grace. It hurts to think about her. I want to tell her I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I got her involved. Please be safe, Grace. Grace, 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 Grace. I am one obsessed antagonist. It calms me down when I write your name. Grace, 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 Grace. I'm so sorry. You're not very graceful, man. August 4th. The journal is still here, thank God. I was afraid she would find it somehow. When I saw that she didn't, it was such a huge relief. Um, I want to write in, in, in it right away, but no, I didn't. Um, I have to be patient. I write only when I am sure Anna's not around. Not while she's walking around tending the patients, pretending she's not who she really is. Oh, okay, maybe, I don't know the story, I, but, and it's a good thing I waited. She came into my room only a few minutes after I woke up. She smiled and asked me how my night had been. I held back from telling her how I really felt about her being here and about her. I mean, it's not like I can hide everything, not after what happened, but at least I can pretend I'm not planning to do what I'm going to do. And who knows, maybe she thinks I've gone back to how it was before. I haven't gone back, and I'd rather die than be like that again. But it would be nice if she believed that. She'd let her guard down. Well, it doesn't matter that much, really. Even if she finds out that I'm planning on killing her, so what? So what? It's not like she can call the police or anything. I'll end her life just the same. From the comfort of my prison cell, if it comes to that, I'll do it. If I need to kill Anna to save Grace, I'll do it in a heartbeat. You know what? Actually, Grace doesn't even need to be saved. Yeah, Grace is fine. Somewhere far away, without care in the world, and I'm worrying over nothing. Yeah. If only. Hopefully Anna didn't send out, like, an assassin or something. Are we really going through this with diary injuries? I haven't gained any strength back. Am I being impatient? I might be. The doctor thinks that is sh for sure that I'm being impatient. I asked him for some exercises I could do, but he told me to shut up and rest. So, uh, what are you in a hurry for? He asked me. Uh, so my doctor bill doesn't go up. I don't have to stay in the hospital anymore. Maybe I want to actually move. So, I couldn't tell him, so I didn't say anything. Maybe the doctor's in on it. On whatever the nurse is doing. Anna, whatever her name is. My next idea was to find a weapon. I haven't seen anything good, though. I'll still look out for something I could use, but I haven't had my hopes up. Um, yeah, because there's nothing you can use in a hospital can't swipe a scalpel or something. I don't know. Maybe you could stab her with a needle to death. Huh? I mean, I could rip out the needle in my arm connected to the IV drip, 
but I don't think that'd be a good murder weapon. I don't know if you can find her and suck all the blood out of her needle point by needle point. That might be a good death for someone who is evil. Wait, what then? I can't think of anything. My mind is foggy from the drugs and the pain, and god damn it, to why is there always so much bullshit? Damn it. Why do I always have to deal with all this? With all what? So far, I've, I, all I know about you is that you want to kill your nurse. And you're trying to save someone named Grace. But she's already safe. Nothing. I try is going to work. I don't know. Maybe if you try the knife or gun, that might work. Uh, August 5th, again. I've calmed down. I can't afford to lose my nerve. Not now of all times. No emotions that comes when I'm safe. Uh, okay. When we're safe, both me and Grace, or Grace and I, which would be more proper. My biggest problem is not being able to walk. They set the bones in my legs straight, and everything, and it's healing in its cast. But, it'll be a long time before I'm able to walk, I think. Maybe I'll be able to walk with a crutch soon. It can help me get my strength back. I'll ask the doctor when I see him. What happened to you? It's early morning. I hear someone coming down the hall slowly, not in a hurry. They sound like they're wearing hospital slippers. Most likely it's the doctor and a nurse. I hope it's a nurse other than Anna. I pray that it's anyone else. Door opens. The doctor comes in, and a step behind him is a nurse that is not Anna. A sigh in relief. Oh, hello, doctor, sir. And a lot of pain, huh? No, no, it's not that doctor. But, well, I can't wait. It can wait, unless it's urgent. It's not. Very well, then. The doctor can't be over 35 years old, even though I can't see his face. He's wearing a golden watch and fine-looking leather shoes. He doesn't look like a doctor to me at all, more like a businessman. The doctor goes from bed to bed with the nurse checking on the patient, spending no more than a minute with each. He comes to my bed last. Okay, Mr. Friday. That's my name, Mr. Friday. What was it again? Let, let's see here. He leaves through some papers and clicks his tongue. Ah, uh, you fell. Yeah. How the hell did you manage to do that? Oh. These substances we found in your blood work explain that mystery. Not very clever, are you? I feel like I'm being attacked here personally. Getting high and... Doctor, you can't say that. Oh, sue me. And you, don't do it again. Next time, I won't patch you up, you hear? I'll try not to. He's being rude, but it doesn't really bother me. I've got more important things on my mind. Doctor, how long until I can start walking, at least with crutches? I don't know. What? What? You, you're a doctor. You're, aren't you my doctor? The very same. Who do you think operated on you? I look down on my leg. I'm suddenly very unsure of what I'll see when the cast comes off. Can't you at least guess when I'll be able to walk? I'd rather not. The nurse standing next to the doctor looks uncomfortable. She is holding a hand to her forehead and sighing. But why not? Don't I deserve to know? Well, a lot of factors are at play here, you see. The doctor starts moving his right hand in complex patterns. Plenty of factors can't and change how quickly you are. A whole lot. 
So who can really say? Factors like what? Oh, so many of them. Like what? Like, uh, he glances down at his papers. Like your blood pressure, which is crap, by the way. Are you stressing over something? Yes. No. No, doctor, I'm not. I'm fine. No. He frowns a little. Well, you'll be fine. Kick your feet back and relax. What are you in such a hurry for anyway? You haven't got a job waiting out for you outside or anything. Huh? How do you know that? Oh, well, nurse, uh... He snaps his fingers trying to remember. Anna. Nurse Anna, that's the one. She told me. And yes, I know about you two. No need to act surprised. You're a lucky guy, you know that? Yeah. When I first found out, I was against letting her care for you, being objective, and all that stuff, you know? But she really wanted to, so I thought, whatever. And she's taking it well, so I guess it's okay. The doctor stares off into space and looks at me and grins. Oh, I see. It's her. What? She's the reason you want to get the hell out of here, huh? I don't blame you. There's no privacy here at all. Oh, no, I didn't. Don't be ashamed now. I, I get what it's like. He drops a smile. But you can't be thinking about those sorts of things. You got the rest. <laughs> to rest properly. All right, all right. He leaves with a thumbs up. Two of the other patients are laughing and whistling, and another one is grumbling with what must be jealousy. Yeah. Idiots. My journal is pressed up against me in a new hiding spot. I've moved it three times now. I've got to write in it. The, my thoughts are bon burning a hole in my skull. Wow, we got a true lyricist right here. I've got to share them with someone, even if that someone is a piece of paper. But not now. She's still out there somewhere. You know, she's just walking around somewhere. August 6th. Damn it. Gosh darn it all. I'm stuck here with nothing to do but lie uselessly and wait. 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 Wait and wait and wait. All I can do is wait. Nothing to do but wait. Wait, wait, wait. For how long? You know, this is such beautiful dialogue, agonizing dialogue, that is pulling me into the story even more. Mm? I hope you guys know that I'm being sarcastic most of these times. So, it's two hours after I've written down those words. I'm looking at the little notebook that is my journal. I've got it in my hands. I am amazingly lucky to have it. Someone has left both the notebook and a pen in the nightstand next to my bed. I checked the nightstand's drawers on a whim, and there they were. Now, there are only things keeping me sane. There's no TV, or books, or even magazines here. Oh, what kind of hospital is this? Probably a mental one. I'm counting the pages I've got left in the notebook, checking how much ink there is in my pen. Then she comes in, I feel my heart stop. What is this? Music. Good evening, boys. She greets everyone, but she's only looking at me. I murmur back a hello. Meanwhile, my hands are still holding the notebook. Clutching, actually. I can feel beads of sweat forming on my forehead. The notebook is small. Very small. My hands must be hiding it from view. Or are they? If she's noticed, Anna pays it no mind. She wills in the cart with our medication. While she's busy with the other patients, I slip the notebook and pen under my blankets, move it over, and lie quietly. How are you holding up, sweetie? Snookums. 
I nearly jumped at Anna's whispered words. I didn't notice her approach. Fine, I'm fine, thanks. I needed to say it twice. That made me less nervous. Or sound less nervous. Hmm. Jack, don't you remember what I told you? It's no good putting on a brave face. I'm here for you, okay? What's this about? Does she know? I know about everything you see. She leans in closer and nearly faint. Everything. Yeah? Yes. I had a little chat with your doctor, you know. And he told me all about how much trouble you're having down there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> as soon as I realize what she means, my, bod my tense body loosens up. Ah, yeah, that. Um, it's uh, a bit of a problem, I guess. Oh, sweetie. Well, I'm sorry your health has priority over sex. But don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. She puts her hand on my blanket, starts moving it out absentmindedly. It makes me happy, though, to see you like this again. After how you acted before your accident, I thought, never mind. Oh god, this is making me uncomfortable. And this music isn't helping. I don't like this music at all. Uh, without warning, she leans in even closer. I feel her hot breath on my cheek. <gasps> But since you're so eager, Jack, I promise that after your release, I'll give you the time of your life. I'm not sure if I want a time of my life with you. I'll make you finally forget it all about Grace. Oh, God. Her words are like a slap in the face. I can only stare back. Hmm. So you still care about her. I don't like that. Someone like you and someone like her, you sh never should have been together in the first place. Please think only of me. After all, we were made for each other. If I do, if I promise, I'll always be with you always. Will you leave Grace out of this? No, that's no good. I can't do that. Just, you're asking that it always it shows you're still thinking about her. She hasn't got anything to do with this. Uh, with what you did to me and what and what I'll do to you. So leave her out of it. Are you holding her somewhere? Uh, at least that girl's good for one thing. Think to her. You've been a good boy. Even though, you're still so confused. Anna, please. I'm close to crying. I want to tear out my, my hair out. Well, that's not really um, a proper thing to do in this situation, and really doesn't help your case with you being possibly insane. Uh, no, don't get me wrong. Anna is absolutely an insane ex-girlfriend that you got there, but... You might be the same. Fine, sweetie, I promise I won't hurt her. As long as you do one thing for me. Do you know what that is? I do. Of course I do. It's something she's been telling me to do for ages since before I got here. She's like a broken record. You want me to remember everything. Yep. Oh, I can't wait. When you do... That everything will be perfect. We'll be together for again forever. So promise you'll remember. I promise I'll try. No. Oh, that's not unsettling at all. That's not good enough. You promised you'd try before, and look where it got us. Tell me you'll do it. I promise. I'll recall it all. Good, you creepy-ass witch.
wench. I'll call her a wench. We'll work on that when you get out of here. But if your memory comes back to you before then, tell me before you tell anyone else. Okay? Bye-bye for now. You weirdo. She weirds. She wheels out the car, glancing back one last time with that eerie look of hers. I can't tell her I already remember. I've known since before my injury. I've known that when we were both children, she... No, I can't tell her. No, you can't tell me. You can tell me, though. Tell me what happened. Oh, come on. If I do that, she wins and Grace dies. And maybe I die, too. I can't win by playing along with Anna's delusions. So I have to kill her. I must kill her. Chapter 2, what? Jack Law. Let's save. Uh, even though there's really nothing to save for, because, uh, honestly, there was, okay. There's nothing to save for because there were no options for me here. Loading will lose unsaved progress. Uh, yeah, I literally just saved them. August 7th. I can't just sit here waiting. I've got to wait, but I will. And I will, but I feel like I can't wait either. I'm doing nothing and it's eating me up. If a stomach is empty long enough, it starts eating itself. Do you know that? I knew that. I know that too. We all- I know that, you know that, let's all know this information. If I don't do something right now, I'm afraid I might go crazy. Um, well, everything's turning red, that means it's scary and evil. Um, I'm going to write down everything that happened. Maybe that'll help me make sense of things. And then I'm going to let um, the person who is playing as me read it. Uh, right now, all my thoughts are buzzing together in my mind like flies around feces. I want my mind to be clear. To do what I'm going to do and to do it properly, my mind needs to be clear, unclouded. This notebook is small, but I think I've got enough space to write everything down. It's not a long story. So here it goes, everything. Oh, am I gonna get visuals? Kind of. You know, it's better than nothing. I've been stuck in this hospital for like exactly 28 minutes and about 15 seconds. It's nice to see a change of view. Well, I met Anna, met her again after so many years in the store where I worked. Grace wasn't there at the time. It wasn't a coincidence that Anna visited the store when she did. It could have it couldn't have been. She must have been following me for all those years. The first time she came in, I was at the cash register. And she walked straight up to me cutting in line. Cutting in line. All right, let's go. Oh, can we? Okay, let's load. I'm saving right there because I don't know if I'm going to have an options. I want to use all the options. She walked straight up to me, cutting in line. An old woman was busy counting her change and didn't complain. Nobody else complained either. Anna stood there a while, staring at me. Then she said, No. No, I can't do this. I can't start here. I can't do it. There's already too much of that woman in my life. I've got to start with someone else. Someone I miss. Grace. Ooh, let's see what Grace... Grace! You know, this is gonna be a little eerie, but I actually have a friend named Grace who is not too far off from looking like that character. So that's a little strange to me. Grace was a girl who worked at the same store I worked at. She was, and is still, a kind, sweet girl. She's a little quiet, but that's perfectly fine. I hated her. 
Whoa! <laughs> you really are insane. I hate most people and most things. I was a real hassle. Well, at least you can admit it. Most assholes don't admit it. I didn't spend time with other people. Whenever a co-worker invited me somewhere, I turned them down. I didn't chat with anyone during breaks either. It was just how I was. How I'd always been. Oh, that's not really assholery. That's more of an introvert thing to do. I'm not even introvert, just antisocial. I avoided Grace too, of course. She tried to talk to me a few times, but then I started avoiding her even more. I only took shifts I thought she wouldn't take. Um, the times we still ended up working together, I stayed as far away from her as I could. It worked for a while. Then came the day we talked, really talked, for the first time. I was restocking the shelves alongside I'd an old, greasy, long-haired man when Grace came along. I didn't even look at her. Instead, I became very interested in stacking cans of food onto the lower shelves. I waited for her to leave. I'm done. Can you switch with me, alright? You can go help Susie. I already did the bottom shelves there. Dawn, the old man, thanked her and left. And Grace started working next to me. A minute went by. I found that I couldn't work in peace. Just her being there made me upset. Why is that? Like, what did she do to you? All I heard is that she tried to talk to you. You were fine working with the old man. What's so different about her? I had to say something. I'm fine on my own. Hmm? If you want to take a break or something, you can. I'm fine on my own. Oh, no. I don't mind doing this. I see. Can't she take a hint? I thought then. It's, um... It's his back, you know? What? Don's back hurts a lot, so I asked him to switch. Oh, I see. He has trouble with the lower shelves, so I get it. I didn't do it to bother you, I swear. I said I get it. Okay. Dang, man. Really offensive. Offended by that. We went on restocking in silence for about another minute. Um, I know you don't like me very much, so I thought... You might think I was bothering you on purpose, so I'm sorry. I sighed. Who says, I don't like you, even though I've been acting like that the whole time? Huh? Don't you? You're always avoiding me. Yeah, don't take that personally. That's just how I am. I don't care about other people. Fucking dumb. Blech. Flipping dumb... Boy, I don't know. If I could go back in time and punch myself in the mouth, I would. What? So you like me? What? No, I didn't say that. Get a clue. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. We didn't talk for the rest of the day, so I thought that was that. She'll leave me alone. I thought now that she knows I prefer it that way, but she didn't. I've always thanked my lucky stars that she didn't leave me alone after that. Maybe she should have, though. For her own sake. I hope she can forgive me. For what? Huh? Writing about the past has been a good idea. Right now, it doesn't even bother me where I am, who I'm with, um, and thinking of Grace, remembering the way she smiled is giving me courage. She got hurt because of me, so I will do anything to make her happy and safe. Well, did she get hurt because of you because you were hurting her? Or did she get hurt because of you because Anna was hurting her? Because if it's the second part, then 
She got hurt because of Anna, not because of you. Just saying. The weather was nice out today. The sky was blue. There is a tiny window on the wall to my left. I can look through it if I had twist my head around. The small patch of the sky is the only beautiful thing around here. That and my memories of her. Oh, more memories! Without any music. The music cuts in and out a lot. I would think there would be more music. But, I guess not. Hi, Jack. Hi. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Let's give it our all today. Yep, let's do that. Um, your, uf your uniform is kind of all wrinkly, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. I haven't got an iron, so... Jeez, you're really hopeless, aren't you? I wouldn't go that far. I could iron your clothes for you, if you say pretty, please. Alright, let's save again. Hell, we could save in all of these, because so far, no options. I did not get an option to love or kill. I'm just on the route of kill uh, at the moment. And I don't know what happened, so I really can't Blame or not blame him yet. Uh, August 8th. After that one time, Grace started coming up to me more and more and talking to me more and more. It was a gradual thing. Just hello and goodbye and how are you doing at first. Eventually, they grew into full conversations. Well, I say full conversations. They were still pretty bare bones. I noticed how friendly she was being, of course, um, but I didn't push her away. I couldn't tell why I didn't do that. I surprised myself every day by not telling her to screw off. Um, hey, Jack. There's this bar just down the road. I hear it's a pretty good place to go. So how about we go there after work today? To relax? Question mark. And when she asked me out for drinks, I surprised myself further by saying, sure. Sure, why not? It's not every day someone asks me out, unless it's a crazy, crazy lunatic girl. How do you like it here? It's, is it nice? It's alright, I guess. I don't really know, honestly. I don't go to places like this. I like this. That's pretty. I like the- I don't know what they are. They're like chandeliers or lights or something. They're lights, obviously, but I don't know. That looks pretty cool, though. Oh, well, I don't either. Not a lot. But I thought it would be fun, you know? Grace ordered a Jack and Coke. Okay. I didn't know what to get, so I asked her, asked for one too. Our drinks came quickly. They were cool and pleasantly sweet, but I couldn't enjoy mine. I was in a bad mood for some reason, like I always am. I'm always in a bad mood, apparently. The waitress had giggled while taking my order, and I took it as an insult. Or it was something else, just as dumb. I can't remember exactly. Ah. Feels good to relax after a long day at work, doesn't it? I grumbled. What is it, Jack? Nothing. I sip my drink. Um, something's bothering you, isn't it? I said it's nothing. I'm just not cut out for this stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have to order if you... Or... You don't have to drink if you don't want to. I don't mean that. I mean all this. I gestured at everything around us, doing things with people. Huh? Why? You wouldn't get it if even if I explained it. We're just too different. I've had a rough I had it rough in life. That's that's why even when people are being nice to me, I'm just 
and just, oh, so horrible. So rough. Really, I'm sorry to hear that. But that doesn't mean you can't enjoy yourself now. I will. It would be a shame not to do fun things just because of that. No, what I'm saying is it's just not fun for me. I don't like this. How can you say that? We've barely been here for ten minutes. I just know. She didn't seem happy I said that. So do you want to leave? Uh, I hadn't actually thought of leaving. I just complain to complain. For someone who has a tough life, you seem to be complaining about a lot of stuff. Because I had a tough life too. But I am not a complete ass to people. And yeah, I do have a lot hard time trusting people. So, in a way, I'm kind of relating to this character, but I'm still not completely downright annoying, which I find this character that I am to be. But that's just my take. I know that there are different extremes into how a rough life can turn people into this. But he has some bougie complaints, you know, for having a rough life. Um, well, you can't leave. Not yet. Oh, yeah? Watch me. Yes. If you keep going like this, you're never gonna have any fun in life. So promise me, you'll at least give being with me a chance. You want me to stay here longer? Yes. At least another hour. A whole hour? Please. Oh god, that fan's on again. I really hate that. It bothers me so much. Fine, I can do an hour. Thank you. You won't regret it. Yeah, sure. It seemed like such a long time. There was a clock on the wall opposite me. I was going to stare at it for the whole hour, counting down the minutes. Then, when the hour passed, I would get up and leave. Simple as that. But then something happened. Grace was having trouble. I've never seen her so awkward. She was stammering, struggling to find stuff to talk about. I realized it was because I was just sitting there barely saying anything. I was acting all grumpy too. That couldn't have helped. Back in the store, with so many distractions around us, it had been easy for her to chat with me every, ever so, every so, ever so often. A few words here and there. I hadn't had too much back. Too, I hadn't had to do much back then besides nod. What is that sentence? I hadn't had to do much back then. Am I... Am I tripping out, or is the game tripping out? Because that sentence makes no sense. I think they meant, I, I had nothing to do other than the nod. Sitting down, talking face to face, it simply couldn't work like that. So. After more than a few failed attempts to get the ball rolling, Grace gave up. She sat there, looking at her drink instead of at me. She was most likely working up the courage to end this early. In just a few minutes, I'd be free to leave. I found I couldn't stand that, so I start talking. I said that first thing that came to my mind, no matter how stupid. I don't know why I did it. It feels so unlike me. Both feeling bad for someone and talking with no feel filter. Or unlike the past me. The past me, the past about an hour ago, apparently. And you completely do a 180. 180 change. For the good, for the better, hopefully. Maybe I was finally warming up to Grace, or maybe it was the alcohol, which I'm guessing it's the alcohol. I don't know. Maybe it was both. The reason doesn't matter. What matters is that it happened. Back then, there was a part of me that never relaxed no matter what. No, it wasn't even a part of me. Pretty much all of me was like that. Like a fist that wouldn't unclench. But now I found I could relax it, little by little, 
by little. And before I knew it, I was having fun in this girl's presence, talking to her, laughing with her, simply spending time with her, like normal people stuff. What, what did we talk about? I don't remember. What I do remember is that I had more fun than I'd had in years. When the hour passed, I didn't say anything. We stayed up there for hours longer. He was getting some. I do remember one thing we talked about, actually. We somehow got on the topic of family. What's your family like, Jack? Uh, I, I can't say. Oh, I see. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. I'm sorry, I asked. I'm kind of not on speaking terms with my family either. Why is that? That's, um... Actually, I don't really talk to other people all that much or hang out with them. Like me! Or you! See, we were made for each other. Well, outside of work. I'm kind of alone a lot of the time. What? Really? Ha, <laughs> yeah. This surprised me. I was surprised a lot back then. I never thought Grace was anything like me. But you're so friendly with the people at the store. That's all it is. It's not that I wouldn't like to spend more time with them, but... I don't know. It feels like if I let them in, they're going to turn out not nice. But you're different. You're just trying to get by. I don't think you'd use someone. God, when I say it like that, it doesn't sound right at all. You must think I'm really weird. I'm sorry. She seems to have, like, social anxiety or something. But I'm not going to generalize it. Because um, it comes in many shapes and forms. Um, but that's what it seems to me. No, I don't think you are. Um, it makes sense what you said. Really. Thank you, Jack. I really, really hoped you'd understand. And I'm so happy that you do. Hey, people who are just trying to get by also take advantage of others. So, I'm just saying, you kind of generalize the person and play out a fantasy situation in your head. And lucky for you, it worked out. So, just saying. I really feel like you're someone I can trust. Someone I just met that I can trust. Seems legit. Let's save again. Because you never know when you'll have an option. And I want to be saved and ready for that option. We went for drinks again next week. And then once more the week after. The week after that, we had dinner together at a greasy little restaurant where we could afford to eat. I tried to impress her by ordering wine. I never had one. It was disgusting, but I guessed it would be disgusting, so I forced my way through a glass anyway. I even said it was delicious. Oh yeah, lying, that does great in a relationship. Then Grace Trisom told me it was spoiled. <laughs> ah, boy, that was, that, that's funny. She cheats the hell out of me for that. I was bitter about it. I left alone, though. Strange how quickly people can change sometimes. Soon we started going out to more, out more often to bars, cheap restaurants, places like that. We took a lot of walks together, too. And one time, we went to the movies. After about a month of this, I asked Grace if she'd be my girlfriend. What? Am I not your girlfriend already? I gotta save it right there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> and that's how it went. I mean, we we could be friends too, you know. But y'all are having fun, so I'm not gonna judge. A week, but a few weeks later, she told me what had happened to her back when she still lived with her family. 
I'd known for a while that something had happened from the fact that she doesn't talk to them anymore, but you know, that's just my general big brain thinking skills right there. Something she hadn't shared with anyone before, but when she told me what it was, a few of the things she said, no, I shouldn't write it down here. It feels wrong. It's not mine to tell. What if someone found this journal? I had never imagined she was living with such a burden. When I found out, I felt crushed. And all of my problems seemed a little less problematic. Uh, that's, I know. God, I feel like an idiot. And after I told you I'd had it rough? No, it's fine. Don't feel bad about it, please. You've got your troubles, and I've got mine. I know, but can't we do something? There's nothing to do. It's all over now. All I can do is keep looking forward. You know? I hugged her and told her how brave she was for telling me. I told her I'd protect her, keep her safe forever, and I met it. And I felt her, but that comes later. For now, I figured I should tell her what my own troubles had been. Um, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Um, Alright, let's save again. Because, why not? It seems like an options thing. It's okay, I, don't, I do want to. So I had managed to keep quiet about my past. I had only alluded to things. Now I told her everything. It wasn't a long story. What? Nothing? You don't remember anything? Okay, it's not exactly nothing. But my teen years are fuzzy. And everything before that, it's like it doesn't exist. What about your family? I don't know, maybe I had one. I was in a lot of institutions before I turned 18. Oh, Jack. I'll tell you about those times if you want, but there's not a lot to tell. Nothing really ever happened to me. I wish I could tell you everything about my life. I really do, but I can't. That's fine. Did you ever try to find out about my life before then? Yeah. I didn't. Why not? I don't know. I just never felt like it, I guess. I must have known, even back then, that some memories are best left buried. I'm sure I would like to remember if I couldn't. Wait, did I read that right? I don't think I did. But you're fine with it. Yeah. Well, okay. Tell me about the times you can remember then. So I went on to tell her all about the few bland memories I had. Am I going to hear about them? Chapter 3, no more stalling, no, 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 no. And with that, I'm going to, um, I'm going to just save and end the video right here. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I know this is such an interesting story, and I don't know what, I, I don't have any generalization about what happened to the dude, but I have a feeling it has something to do with Anna, obviously. Uh, um, don't know what happened to Grace either, obviously. Maybe we'll find out, maybe we won't. It's not his story to tell after all. Uh, anyway. Uh, hope you like my reading skills, because that's, that's the about all the gameplay was um, so far. Hopefully I'll get to do some decision making, some make some choices. Of, I, I mean, I already know love or kill, That that's your choices right there. But, you know, hopefully there can be some other things, too. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Um.